Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to one of our first longer discussions. So this week, hopefully you've been seeing our videos on some of the saints that have impacted our hearts. We wanted to offer you a chance to hear some of the wisdom of our incredible staff about what actually it means to be a saint in our world today. Uh, we hear a lot from the Second Vatican Council, like that's a huge call that we have, is to be a saint. So we thought, well, how do we do that? Like, what is a saint? So I want to ask my incredible holy women here so they can share our wisdom with us. What's a saint? Obviously, we know what the definition of a canonized saint is. Um, and so I think just for us in our, in our faith, it gives us these superheroes that um, we can look to when we're children, when we're teenagers, when we're adults, people that we can look to. And we can find somebody that matches our state in life, somebody that um, is who we want to, to be or who we hope to be um, more like. And so um, that's the way I think about it is, you know, you, you, you look at, the, at kids and how they have these these people that they look up to like superheroes and that kind of thing. So they're kind of like our Catholic superheroes. <laughs> yeah, I think of the scripture passage of Jesus from the gospel of John chapter 10, where he says, I came that they might have life mm -hmm. and have it more abundantly. So when we look at the saints, like what Kelly was sharing, we see people who lived life fully, holy. They like holy is in like in its fullness, you know? Um, they, we see them like the fullness of humanity and that's who we're also called to be. So holiness isn't like something you tack on or something that's like, um, in addition to us, it, it's like who we are and it's, it's, full, it's realization, you know, it's, it's the fullness of our humanity. And I love too, that our saints aren't only people who lived once long ago that we look up to, but they're also people who are still interceding for us from heaven now. Uh, and so that's so neat when they get involved in our lives and we invite them into our lives and in unique ways um, in learning their stories, but then also as they're really kind of interceding for us and getting involved, um, their charism continues on in the world and they continue to have influence in our life. Mm -hmm. So what are some misconceptions we can have about saints? Because I think sometimes when we read the stories of saints, they can seem like almost like superhero to the extent that we never can. Like I love Superman, but it's, I never can be Superman. Like, he's a Kryptonian. And that's, I feel like <laughs> sometimes we can think of saints as they're like, they're these Kryptonians who have these superhuman powers. So is that who saints are? These people who have this crazy amount of grace that are able to do something that we, let's say mere mortals never can. That's a really neat thing that I, that I, love about I had done this um the video this week on Saint Gianna and one of the things that strikes me so much is that about her is that I don't I don't believe um that the the only reason that she you know she's most known for this heroic um sacrifice that she made of her life for her child but mostly um her whole life led up to that moment because she loved so heroically and she is so so really that's so simple and we talk about this all the time. God is love. You know, uh, love is, is everything that, um, that we, you know, need to surround ourselves with or, or whatever. But, um, but really that's the truth that it's just about love. And so it was through this, this, um, heroic love that she had for everyone she met. So her family, her siblings, her parents, then her husband, then her children, and, and ha being able to have that amount of love because she had communion with the father. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that, you know, we, we talk about that and it's such a simple, simple thing. So not a, not a superpower, but just like a, a super understanding kind of. And I think it's important to remember like the saints weren't born saints, you know, they struggled throughout their whole life. They looked every day was a getting up and conforming themselves to Christ more and more. And some days they fell. Um, but the key is that the saints get back up and they keep running. And Sister Christy and I talked to uh, earlier this week when we were talking about some of our Teresa's, a uh, little plug for our other video if you haven't seen it, um, but how uh, both Mother Teresa of Calcutta and St. Therese of Lisieux also struggled in their prayer lives. There were mm -hmm. periods of time that they talked about um, that we didn't know, I think, about both of them until after mm -hmm. their death and reading their writings, that they... Uh, acknowledged this dark night of the soul, this time where they felt disconnected from God, 
um, even when they doubted his existence. And so, uh, and then what an act of faith when you can't feel God mm -hmm. to still live in love of mm -hmm. God. So that was very encouraging for me too, to know that uh, sometimes if I go to prayer and I can't hear God or can't feel God, uh, that I'm in good company, that there's some pretty holy people who also struggled in prayer from time to time. So we had that struggle, but maybe we're like, what are some other struggles that might be on our way to being saints that um, when we look at, let's say even our own weaknesses, we're like, okay, like, well, maybe we have this desire. Maybe we're like, all right, if they did it, I can do it too. Like there's that um, beautiful reflection that St. Augustine has his confessions that right before he is willing to give up everything, he sees this and he's looking at his own weakness. He sees across the chasm, all the saints who say, you can do this too. Mm -hmm. um, I think like St. Augustine, you know, he's famous for saying, you know, Lord, make me chase, but just not yet, uh, that we all have these weaknesses inside of us that keep us. So uh, what are some obstacles that might keep us from being the saints that we're called to be? Very um, word that you said, weakness, that, that it's through, sorry, sister. <laughs> no, this is so funny how this works. <laughs> that, um, that just through, um, that it's going to be, it's going to be through the weaknesses that we have in our humility in that that's going to draw us closer to the Lord and then ultimately make us saints. So um, I think that the drawback to that would be assuming that those weaknesses or those things that we struggle with will, will um, disqualify us for, for sanctity. And so to just sort of quit, um, it's such a trick to think that you have to, to be this perfect person or this perfect being, or like sister was saying, kind of they come from this saint hatchery of, of people who were perfect and, and so it's not that it's like embracing those weaknesses and offering them to the Lord and letting him work in that that will move you forward. I know my Lord told Saint Faustina that the the number one obstacle to holiness was discouragement so I think very similar to what you mm -hmm. were saying Kelly that after a fall just not getting back up not trusting in the Lord's mercy um, that the Lord's mercy is there and relying too much on yourself. So the reason why we fall is, and this is again something the Lord said to St. Faustina, um, the reason why we fall is because we rely too much on ourselves and not enough on him. And I was praying with uh, the Good Samaritan uh, scripture. And I was thinking about that and thinking, you know, in that scripture, how many people walked by and didn't do, uh, didn't show love um, and what their reason was and, you know, really like cleanliness and for them, this idea of potentially holiness because they were on their way to do something else and had all of these rules and couldn't stop. And so in my prayer, I asked the Lord, I said, well, what is that for me? What is, what is the thing that keeps me walking by that keeps me from stopping and saying yes to your invitation at times? And very clearly for me, uh, so now I'm just like exposing myself here and telling you, um, for me, he said it's busyness, that, that busyness is really the thing that um, is a stumbling block to my holiness because I can fill up all of my time with all of these things. And they're not even necessarily bad things, but they're certainly not things that are um, maybe uh, at their core, their purpose to deepen my relationship with God. So actually during this time, I have found so much more time for uh, spiritual reading, for deeper conversations with individual people instead of lots of conversations, kind of more of a surface level. Uh, and so I feel like this has offered, you know, kind of a pause to that busyness on the calendar and really inviting uh, a deeper holiness. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of the examine prayer. It's one of my favorites of like taking some time every day to reflect on just like how those movements in our, our heart, like what will be experienced and how do we respond to that? So I know like, at least for me, sometimes just because life can be so busy and so much can be happening, the day can just pass me by. And if, if, I, if I don't take time to realize just the way my heart is moving, sometimes like you just kind of like in this rut and you get this way of acting, you just naturally like, this is how I'm gonna react in this situation. Uh, maybe it's at work, maybe it's at home. Like I know I'm just gonna act out of anger when I have this interaction with this person. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, that maybe when I get home, I'm just going to spend all this time on Netflix. Just that's naturally what's going to happen. Um, but when we, you know, like those times I've taken time to really, at least at the end of the day, reflecting on just like, Lord, like what are the ways that you were trying to direct my heart? So like what really is going to satisfy me are the times like where we can kind of get out of that pattern that we find ourselves in. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, that can sometimes happens. The devil knows us so well that he realizes very easily like the ways that he can direct us toward the wrong ways. and 
he, that's what he wants most is to, to give us like that discouragement, like you're talking about sister, um, that we focus just simply on the weaknesses. But what I love about the examine is the last part of it isn't focusing on the weakness. It's, it's looking at the next day and asking yourself, all right, I'm going to go in this next day. And I'm going to go forward knowing that I can conquer it and knowing, all right, I'm going to be ready for this moment. Uh, it really isn't, uh, so I think sometimes people can see that, that when we focus a lot on our weaknesses that are, uh, as, as Catholics say, like, you know, we the term like Catholic guilt, like that's just what motivates us, that's what drives us. But truly, like if you're saying, like being a saint is about trusting ourselves completely to the mercy of God and just letting him work in us, especially in our weaknesses. What I love about, uh, highly recommend if you haven't read it, St. Therese's Story of a Soul is beautiful. Um, she's one of those saints that, for me on the outside, seems super perfect. But then when you get to actually read her writings, you see that she was just such a normal person with normal struggles. But she saw that because she was so weak, the Lord wanted in a magnificent way to act powerfully in her. I think the key with that is just to, to look at um, a, a way that you feel called to grow in your holiness and then do a little research um, because there's so many wonderful saints um, and they, they have these sort of like two sentence stories that, you know, we kind of get in elementary school of them or whatever, but as you were saying, Ashley, like digging a little bit further, reading their, their biographies or finding out exactly what it was that made, that, that made them who they were, because you'll, you'll read that and then you'll think, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm not as far off as I thought. And it gives you such hope um, that you can kind of achieve uh, that same, same level of holiness. So I think just for me, it's, it fluctuates mm -hmm. what, you know, where I am in my life and, and, um, and also for me, sometimes the saints will kind of, um, kind of present themselves to us in a way that, um, you know, we might not have been expecting. So these, some of these things I, I didn't really know or, or seek mm -hmm. out, but then all of a sudden they start appearing, you know, you get a holy card or you'll see something on, um, I don't know, Facebook about this saint or something else. And you, you start to notice like, okay, this thing kind of kind of nudging me to learn a little bit more and that's I think the way that the communion of saints looks in our in our lives you know I'm thinking actually at St. Francis de Sales um, he was a saint who was in the beginning of his life had struggled with anger like he admitted it that he had anger management issues that he that was his vice was was anger but he worked his entire life at the thing that he struggled at the most um, and really by the end of his life, like he's known today as the gentle saint. Uh, he became a very gentle, tender person because he, he fought his sinful inclination. So like saints like him remind us that um, holiness is living a life of virtue. It's striving for virtue. And in fact, the first phase of a canonization process is that the church recognizes that that individual lived a virtuous life at that point then they're called venerable um, and that's the most important step is that so i think when we look at the lives of the saints i think they're inspiring to us because we can see precisely how they struggle but how they were able to take that area they struggle in and work at the opposite virtue and with god's grace and how they transform that into something beautiful and that's exactly what the mercy of god does god draws good from evil. Mm -hmm. The lives of the saints allow the Lord to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you're saying about uh, drawing something beautiful, I can't help but think of uh, St. John Paul II mm -hmm. um, and how during a time when the world was very much telling us that um, our, our humanity and our sexuality and all of this was a particular way, that he really, um, through his papacy, but in his own call to holiness was drawing out all of the beauty of who we were created to be um, and the way that we were created to love. And so instead of allowing this distortion to continue um, unchecked, he very courageously uh, spoke so beautifully and let the Lord use him as a vessel to show us um, very much how our humanity can be beautiful and the way that we're called to love each other can be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's so great. Like the, the Lord desires our holiness so much more than we ever could. And he places so many of those, those avenues. Yeah, just, like, you know, looking at the life of John Paul II and just the many ways that the Lord 
wanted him to say yes and encouraged him and guided him to say yes and just how his yes has transformed so many lives. It's beautiful. Um, before we leave, I know we each have a little saint quote that we wanted to share or a different quote about holiness. Uh, so these are just a few quotes that we found to kind of encourage you on your journey of being a saint. So mine is St. John Paul. Um, and he said, we are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us and our real capacity to become the image of his son, Jesus. And I really liked that because we had just spoken about weaknesses. And so that's not, that's not who we are. We're not our weaknesses and our failures, but, um, but we are, are for the Father. And so to return to him in that, in that call for holiness. Mine is also a John Paul quote in relation <laughs> to holiness. Um, and he says this so simply. He says, holiness is a message that convinces without the need for words. It is the living reflection of the face of Christ. And I love that because it points us back to Christ. It's saying holiness, like when Christ came, one of the things, obviously he redeemed our, um, he redeemed us, but he redeemed our humanity. He reminded us of what it meant actually to be human. This is how God intended us to be. And so holiness is going back to how God intended us to be. So if we keep our gaze on Christ um, and we keep getting back up after we fall, then we will reach holiness. My quote kind of uh, stems off of that too, Sister um, St. Catherine of Siena, uh, whose feast day we just celebrated uh, recently. Um, she said, be who God created you to be, and you will set the world on fire. And I think that idea of each of us is called in a unique way to holiness, that I can be inspired by the saints and by the people around me who are also living their call to holiness, but acknowledging that the world only has one of each of us and the world needs a holy you, uh, just as it needs a holy me. And it doesn't need you to be, try to be like me or me to try to be like you. Um, it needs, the world needs you in your fullness and your holiness and the way God created you to be. Uh, so that we surround ourselves with people who speak truth to us and speak about our goodness and build us up and encourage us to be the, the whole person that God's created us to be. And then uh, together, this world will be ablaze. So my quote is often attributed to many sources, um, but it says <laughs> that uh, the church is not a mausoleum of saints. It's a hospital for sinners. And I love that because sometimes we can think that the, the church is simply here just to lift up the perfect, because that's kind of who we sometimes see a little more in the forefront. And of course, like it's beautiful, we do. But the only reason we lift up those who are saintly, those who are holy, is to help us, to guide us. The, the reason the Lord gave us the church was because he wants us to be with him forever. Uh, and there's literally nothing that is enough that he wouldn't give up to have that, have us be with him forever. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this week. Uh, we'll be back again next week with some maybe new faces, some familiar faces to share with another discussion on another week. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thank you.